here, again, is a pretty messy expansion to the power of 10. Gross, I don't really want to write all of those out. The question they're posing to you is, which of these 11 terms, because that's how many there will be once I get to the end, which of these 11 terms has no x's in it? No x's in it. So they could either say um, is a constant term, because if there are no x's, all you're left with is numbers, or they might say the term independent of x. You've seen that phrase before? So in other words, all the x's from here and here have kind of cancelled each other out. Okay? So here's the way I'm going to go about it. The first thing I will write is, how can I state this in sigma notation as a sum of the general term? All the terms have the same format. So it's the sum from r equals what to what? Where am I going from? I always start in Pascal's triangle, I always start with the zero term. And because I'm on this row, then I'm going to go zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up until 10. You happy with that? Okay, what about my binomial coefficient? Have a look at it. Again, I'm on the 10th row. Okay. So I'm going to say 10 C R. Okay. All right, which one would you like me to write first? Uh, well, I would, wouldn't you turn that into a fraction of the 2x? This guy here? Yeah. Do, you want, do you want me to write this one first? Yeah. Yeah? Sure, why not? Remember, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Okay. <laughs> so I can write this minus 2 over x. I can write it in that form if you find it easier to wrap your head around it. Um, how many of these am I going to have? This is the r term, right? R of them, that's fine. And then I've got the other guy, the 5x to the 4. How many of those do I have? Okay, now, remember I said to you, I can write it either way. I wonder if you're starting to think, hmm, is there an advantage at any point to doing it this way or the other way? We'll have a think about that as we get to it. So remember, I'm searching for a term. One of these terms has no x's in it. All the x's have cancelled out. So how will I find out, you know, rather than just trial and erroring it, how will I found out, find out which one it is? <coughs> and you take this? How can I use this knowledge here? Well, I kind of have already used this knowledge. How can I push on it? What can I do with it? Do what do you reckon? You want like to cancel that, right? So it um, five five x to the four has to be squared. Uh, yeah, squared. This guy here. Yeah, and the other to the power of eight. Okay, so. You actually gone straight to the answer. You were trying to match up these guys with these guys and make sure they have exactly the same number. If you're good at thinking about it, you can say, oh, well, this should be exactly the opposite number of that. And you can start to crunch what's happening here mentally. Um, I can't do that. I don't know how many of you can actually do that in your head. If you can, if you become comfortable enough to uh, crunch that without actually having to write anything down, that's fine. However, here might be a more systematic way to do it. I'm actually going to take this guy and I'm going to write him back in... Uh, index notation. You'll see why in a second. So if I write like so, this is all of those things. Um, if I write this as x to the minus 1, if you raise something in here to a power, right, what happens to the powers? Like if I have something like 2 squared and I raise that to the power 7, what do I do with these powers? I multiply them, right? So this is actually be 2 to the 14 because it's um, 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared, all the way up until you've got 7 of them, right? That's 14. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. This is really x to the minus 1. So I'm going to have this many negative 2s, and I'm going to have this many x's. Do you all agree? Do you see what I've done with the powers there? That x to the negative 1, I've multiplied that by r, because that's how many of them I have. Now I've got that in index notation. I'm going to do the same thing over here. How many fives do I have? Just like I've got r of the negative twos, I'm going to have five to the power of n minus r. Do you see I'm trying to separate the numbers and the x's right now? Because the question asked me something about the x's, and I'm going to provide an answer about the numbers. Right? How many x's are left over? How many x's have I not written down that needs to belong over here? Remember what I do with powers again. There's this, and then there's this. 
So I think I have 4n minus 4rx's hanging out on the end. Is, is that okay? All right, now the reason this is useful is because now I have all of the x's kind of pushed out, pulled out from where they were all tangled up and all the other stuff, right? Here are some x's here, and here are some x's here. Do you agree? So, I'm almost finished with my general term. r equals 0, 10. Okay, I'm going to put all the numbers to one side, and then I'm going to have all the x's to one side. So, I can see one, two, three parts of this long, awful term, right? There's the binomial bit, there's the first number, and there is the second number. And then I've got all these x's. Well, now that I've, I'm multiplying these together, I actually can just do an index looking with them. When you multiply numbers with the same base, what do you get? What do I do with their powers? I add them, right? So this looks like it's going to be x to the 4n minus 5r. Yep. So far, so good. OK, now what was the question asking me again? Which x term did I want? Yeah, it's the one independent of x, right? Uh, except I noticed that I've written I've written n's and that kind of thing because that's all general. I actually know what n is, don't I? And no one stopped me. <laughs> What's n in this case? It's 10, right? So I actually can just write that as 10 minus r. And this, what's that? 4n. That'll be 40, won't it? That. OK. There's my 10. So in here, that's also going to be 40. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Okay, so I've worked all this way with this messy general term. I should point out, even though it's messy, it's certainly a lot better than having written out 11 terms, right? Oh, this is way faster, okay? So I can say, therefore, I can now go straight to the term that I want. The term independent of x. We'll have, well, over there, x to the power of 40 minus 5r. If it's independent of x, this thing up here should be exactly 0, right? I should land on 0. That was what it would mean if all of these guys cancelled with each other, okay? So I will have uh, 40 minus 5r equals 0. Like that's what I want, right? I want all of those indices to exactly cancel out so I will have no x's anymore. No more x's means I'll just have one, two, three numbers, right? And they're independent of x. Numbers are independent of x. Um, we can solve for r, can't we? What's r going to be equal to? So that's the term I'm after. I'm just going straight there, okay? Which is actually what Kenan was saying before, the 8 and 4 thing, okay? But sometimes these numbers are not quite so obvious and maybe you couldn't see it before, like I couldn't. So now I've gone straight there just by solving with the power, okay? So therefore, the term is... Now, because I'm now saying the term, I didn't have to write sigma. Sigma means out of all of them, right? Because this thing really does have 11 terms in it. But now I'm just going to the eighth term. So I'm going to say it's uh, 10 C8 times what? What else have I got in the general term up there? Negative 2 to the 8 times 5 to the... 10 minus 8, which is 2. There we go. Um, I have no idea what this is. Can someone tell me what it equals to? I, this is the only bit that I don't actually know. The rest of it we can work out. That's 256 times 25. Has someone got a number for me? 288,000. The whole thing? Yeah. Can I get some confirmation? Thumbs up? Okay. So, can we just rewind a little bit? Uh, what we've done is we've said, okay, any time you want to go for a specific term, which is primarily when this power is ridiculous, and you're like, I don't want to write this whole thing out. Um, you can go specifically to one by using this, the general term. What we mean by the general term is every term, generally speaking, every term looks like this. You just change what R is, and then you'll go from one term to the next. Okay. Once you've got the general term written out, you can pull it apart. You can pull it apart, take the x's out onto one side, do some um, index laws on them, and then you can single that guy out, find out where he's equal to 0, or find out where he's equal to 2, or 8, or whatever number they're interested in, 
and then you just evaluate that term directly, okay? Far more efficient. Uh, I didn't even need to evaluate the x term because we know it's not going to have any bits to it, okay?